Now that we've set up our GitHub account, and we've also set up our domain name at Namecheap, and have our HTTPS set up with the padlock in the browser, it's time to set up our local development environment. To do that, go to a new tab in your browser and type in Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is an editor built by Microsoft that has Git built into it, which I'll explain in a moment, and it's available for Linux, Windows, or Mac. Download the version for your operating system. When it downloads, go ahead and open the zip file. On a Mac, then you want to drag it to your Applications folder. Navigate to your Applications folder, find the icon, and then drag it down to your dock, and then open the file. The first time you open it, it will ask you if you want to open the file you just downloaded from the internet. In this case, the answer is yes. Yours will likely open in a window about this size. If you want it to be full screen, hold down the Option key and click the green button. Okay, and then hold the Option key and click the green button to come back. I recommend not just clicking the green button, because if you click the green button without holding the Option key, then it becomes full screen and we don't get the menus at the top. I can see them if I hold my mouse here, but I don't like waiting that extra second. So it slows me down. So what I recommend that you do is press escape now, actually click on the green button, then hold the option key, then click the green button. And here we still have the menu options. So let's explain what we're seeing here. This is a welcome screen that we can just leave there for a second. Here we have a file explorer. Then we have a search bar. We have source control. We have debugging and we have extensions. Before we do anything, we want to install some extensions. So I'm going to resize my window and I have a text file here that says what the recommended extensions are. So these four extensions, I highly recommend that you install and will make your life easier. These ones are optional and I do recommend them as well, but they're not necessary to complete all of the tasks. So on the fifth level down, this little block thing, this is the extensions. We can search. So I'll just type in live server. And there we go. We can install live server. This will allow us to have our code on the left and a live version of our website on the right. This is very easy for us to debug what's going on as we type our code. Next extension we want to install is prettier. This will allow us to format our code. If you notice, there's these brackets, then this line, and then this bracket is here, and everything is perfectly indented. Prettier will do that automatically for us. Next, we want to install Bracket Pairs Colorizer 2. If you can't see which one it is, just drag this out, and this is the newer version. Go ahead and install that. What this does is it will keep bracket pairs the same color. You see how this one is light blue and this one is light blue. These two are yellow and we can tell that this magenta one goes with this magenta one. Sometimes it gets really confusing when you're coding and that can really help. The next extension is Git Lens. This is great because it takes care of a lot of the Git functions and we can use it right within Visual Studio Code. Git is often used at the command line, but that can be a little confusing and intimidating. So using Git Lens, we can do a lot of the functions without using the command line. Let's go ahead and install the optional extensions. Here we have Colorize. And Colorize is great for when we're working in CSS. We can see extra color in the background of the colors that we've selected. So you can instantly remember where uh, the colors that you used for your design are. The next one we want to install is CSS Peak. Right here, you can see this magnifying glass. If I install that, you'll notice in this animation, if I highlight over this comments class, then we can see the CSS that's there. This is really convenient. Ignore all this code. I don't expect you to know anything about that. We're, this course is about a zero knowledge web development. So we're gonna walk through everything step by step. So then HTML tag wrapper, this is great. As you can see in the animation, you can highlight a section of code and then have the tags go around that code without having to copy and paste. It's very convenient. And then the last optional extension is auto rename tag. Let's go ahead and install that. If we scroll down here, you can see it renames both tags. One of the things we'll learn about HTML is that HTML tags have a beginning tag and a closing tag, and both are important and both have to be the same. So this will really help us uh, do that. So once we have these extensions installed, we can go ahead and expand Visual Studio Code to be full width. I can close this tab. 
If you want to see what extensions you have installed, you can click these three little dots and then you can change settings about them or uninstall them if you don't like the extensions, okay? So let's go ahead and click the file icon right up here at the top. And it says, we have not opened a folder. Everything we do in this course will be project-based. So we'll have a folder and that will have everything for that project in it, okay? So we will have multiple folders, but in Visual Studio Code, you only have one folder or one project opened at a time. So let's go ahead and open a folder. It brings up a finder dialog and on my desktop where I'm going to be saving all of my projects, I don't have any folders. So I'll go ahead and create a new folder and I'm going to label this folder my second repository. Why is it my second repository? Because when we set up our GitHub account, it automatically created our first repository when we made our domain name. So this will be our, my second repository. Once I created the folder, I can click open. I'm going to go ahead and close uh, this welcome screen. And then over in my second repository, I'm going to right click and create a new file. This file I will label index.html. And it's important that you label it index.html, all lowercase. Before we talk about any HTML code, I'm going to show you that you can create a website and the browser will recognize it without doing any HTML. So I'm going to type hello world again, two exclamation points. I'll press Command S to save, or you can use the menu File Save. So now this is saved. If we want to see what it looks like, we can go ahead and quit Visual Studio Code, reopen Visual Studio Code. Now all our extensions are working. Down at the bottom, down at the bottom of Visual Studio Code, you can see Go Live. If I click that. In my browser now, and notice this is a weird URL, that's because this file is on the local computer. This is an IP address for the local computer on uh, that I'm, I'm on, but I'm still in Firefox. And I can see hello world again. Now look at the difference. This one is my URL that I created with my domain name. This one has the proper HTTPS, right? And then this one has all these numbers in front of it, the 127.0. So this is, we can preview on our browser here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resize my windows. And this is a very common setup when you're doing web development is to have two windows side by side like this, one with a browser showing what you're doing and then one with your, your code that you're working on, okay? But what we wanna do is actually have this on the web just like this one, right? So this is great, this is actually on the web. If you type this web address into your cell phone, you'll see likely a different uh, updated version of this website. So we wanna be able to do that with our hello world again, share it with our friends. So how do we do that? Well, we wanna click on source control. That's this weird network looking icon here. And we'll have two options. The first one is initialize a repository. What that does is make a Git instance inside this folder, inside the folder, my second repository. Don't worry about that. What that basically is, is just a history. If you've used Photoshop, Photoshop has history and you can go back in time. Well, this is a way for going back in time with uh, code files. It's very, very convenient. We also have Publish to GitHub. If I click Publish to GitHub, it will automatically initialize the repository. Uh, but just to get you into the habit of initializing your repository when you first start, I'm gonna go ahead and click Initialize Repository. Now, Notice that there's a notification icon right here, okay? What we need to do is click on index, right? And it shows us what's different from the original, nothing. And then I can click the plus button there. Then I can click this checkbox and it's asking, what do I want to do? And I'm, why are you committing it? Or why are you committed to these changes? Why do you want to save this point in time? And I can say my first sentence. Right? And if I press enter, it now has committed those changes. And if I click here on index and I go down to timeline, you can see right here, my first sentence. And then John Doe, I just put in a dummy name right now. That is there. So let's go ahead and change it. Let's make another commit, woo hoo. So you see right here, this circle dot, that means that's not saved. So if I press command S, and as soon as I press Command S, notice this icon because Git is watching all the files. See, it has something changed, has something changed. Yes, something has changed. So I can click on this icon 
and then I can just go ahead and uh, type in a message, my second commit, and I can press the checkbox and it'll commit it. The first time you just click the checkbox without clicking the little plus icon down here, a dialog box will come up and it'll say, do you want to commit changes without staging them first? I recommend clicking always. The traditional way is to commit in two steps, stage then commit. But for what we're doing in this project, it's much simpler just to be able to click the checkbox and commit your file. So I recommend clicking always on that dialog. Great, so now if I go back to the file explorer and I click on index, now look at the timeline. I have two commits, right? The first one was my first sentence and then I have my second commit. And I can click on these and see what has changed. This is amazing. It's very much like track changes in a Word document or Photoshop history so that we can go back in time if we've made a mistake. Very convenient. So we're gonna be using that on all the exercises that we do in this course. So now let's get it onto the web. So to do that, we're gonna connect our already established GitHub account. So down at the very bottom here, it's probably hard to see right next to where it says master, there's this cloud icon with an up. So I'm gonna click that. And what it says is the extension GitHub, which is already installed, wants to sign in using GitHub. I'm gonna say allow. Now it's gonna to go to your browser here. And if you're not signed in to GitHub, you'll have to type in your username and password, but I'm already signed in. And it's asking if you want to allow access to your GitHub account. Now you should always be careful about this, but since you know you just asked for it, I'm gonna click continue. And then your local computer is now telling you, hey, there's uh, something coming from the internet. Is this okay? And since you just did this, you should feel pretty safe uh, clicking this link. And then up at the very top here, it says publish to GitHub private repository. So it defaults to private so no one can see your code. And then, so I'm gonna click that right there. And then you see the little clock right here. If you look at source control, it's doing all that. And it should be at my repository. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my browser, expand my browser a little bit so we can see. And this is my repositories. This is my Mutona Authentan. And if I click on my profile and I go to my repositories, woohoo, look at this, my second repository updated 21 seconds ago. If I click on it, it said here is index.html. Wow, there's one contributor, that's me. And I can look at the history. This is the same history as we saw in Visual Studio Code, but now it's, on, it's online. And notice that this sentence, the, this commit message is very important because if you just get in the habit of pressing enter without typing in why you saved it, you're just gonna have all these commits and you'll have to look at them. But if you say, finish navigation or images looking good, some kind of descriptive sentence there, it's very, very important. So here we can see this is my first sentence and this is my second commit. As the project goes along, I need to be more descriptive. So this is the main page of the repository. And what we wanna do is go ahead and click settings, scroll down to the bottom, and here in the danger zone, meaning they wanna make sure that you really know what you're doing if you do anything down here, we wanna change the visibility of this because we actually want to make this code project. Now, if you're working on a, a, a super secret project that you wanna finish before you launch on the world and make tons of money, keep it hidden. But right here, we're gonna click on change visibility. They give you all kinds of warnings. So we wanna click make public. And then they make you type out with your keyboard the name of the repository. So Mutona Authenton slash. So that means you really know what you're doing. A red button, I love red buttons. Okay, so now our repository is public, meaning everybody on the internet can see this repository. Okay, so someone, if someone goes to uh, Matona, Authenton, my second repository, this index HTML and they click on it, it'll be right there and they can, they can see this, okay? And that's fine, we want that because we're actually going to publish it to the web. So now click on settings again. And here we have GitHub pages. What we wanna do is publish this. So right now there's no GitHub pages. It says GitHub pages is currently disabled. Select a source below, okay. What we wanna use is the master branch. So it refreshes the page, and if I scroll down a little bit, it says your site is ready to be published. So if I click on it, oh, it's so sad, because it takes just a second for GitHub to publish the page. And so if you refresh this a couple times, 
then you also want to click Enforce HTTPS. Refresh the page, and once you have this green box, your site should be online. And look at this, hello world again, let's make another commit, woohoo! Now, you might notice something. Here, I have everything on two lines, but here it's all on one line. That's because we didn't tell the HTML anything to do, so the browser just displayed the text. So we're going to learn all about HTML in this course, and we'll do that in the next video by changing our second repository into an actual web page rather than just this uh, fun text that we have here. So in the next video, we'll turn this nonsense text into a working web page.